Hi, welcome to AFTV. I've got a Chelsea fan with me. I have Lewis with me. Um, I'm smiling. Yeah, four I can tell you're smiling, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you? <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it humble. It was a 4-2 four, a four victory. I, I didn't see it coming. I'm going to be honest with you before this. I 100% did the form we've been in. Didn't see it. The boys surprised me. Um, even when the formation came out in the lineup, it was a, it was a surprise. But we got the job done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question you and say, what went wrong for Chelsea today? Come on, man. You know how the story goes. Yeah. Arsenal come to us. Poor position. Season's falling apart. Give you a three points. Help your season get back on track. You know the story. Happens every time. I saw a lot of people are annoyed with the lineup. I didn't really have an issue except the midfield. I thought that pivot was absolute arse and it showed itself in that game. We like ran rings around that midfield yeah. for fun. Everyone else just let Tuchel down. Defence is meant to be our cornerstone. Regardless of who we put in there, we yeah. usually have a solid defensive base. You lot took the piss out of our defence. I saw Smith throw like with close control beating two, three, four oh, players crazy. for fun. And Ketia just dragging our defence all over the place. Both AC and then Silva when he came on the yeah. second half. Saka, I mean... And Marcus Alonso, was, that battle though. It was it was always going to go one way, but like same way, it was just embarrassing. Rich, do you really think that? Because I thought Marcus, Marcus Alonso has been good for you guys. No, it's like his standard's very low. So when he has semi-decent <laughs> games, we hype it up as something that is. And you already know what you're getting with Marcus Alonso. You know when he's facing Saka, Saka's going to cook him. And he cooked him the entire game. I'm not too surprised by that. My issue was the confidence, really. Like but from your side, because then you just obviously beat, you beat Palace both recently. sides. Like yeah. you guys have one win in five going into yeah. this, and we played like we had one win in five going into this, and we were the home team. You guys, every time you attacked, you attacked with confidence. Yeah. You knew where your players were meant to be, and there was direction. Every time we tried to attack, it was like we were just making it up as we were going along, and we all had this deer in the headlights expression, and we were just in the spotlight and clueless. All of them. Well. Maybe not Mount, maybe not Vern. Yeah, it was yeah, more yeah. the likes of Kante, Loftus Cheek, Lukaku. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. He just jogged around for 90 minutes and missed headers. Uh, we have to talk about that brief briefly because, yeah, your strikers who, at first, when you look at them on the team sheet, I was worried. I was worried for our defence. We had a, not, we didn't have a makeshift back line, but Arteta made changes. I was a bit worried, but Lukaku was kind of really missing. Werner caused a bit of problems, but never too much to threaten in, in my sense that I was too worried about. So, yeah, we've got to talk about your strikers. What, what was going on there? Same thing with all of them. Like, I'll be real, rinse and rotate with any of them in midfield and they're all just poor for me. I'll give credit to Werner because he was our best player, but like, it's clear you don't play him in the middle. Right. Lukaku has just been utter arse this season. Like, even Tuchel said he didn't expect him to adapt immediately, but he didn't expect him to be that bad. Like, he, has, he looks like he has no clue where he has to be, where to make runs into. When he goes for a run, it's like he can't anticipate where the ball's meant to end yeah. up. He looks absolutely clueless. Havertz is the same when he comes on. Like, me personally, I think he's the best out of a bad bunch, but yeah. his finishing and his output isn't consistent either. He can come on and go games. There's a reason why he didn't start today. Mm. It wasn't because of rotation. It was because he was poor against Madrid, and it was because he was poor in, against Crystal Palace Ooh. to the semi-final too. Mm. Like, uh, the problem is our attack as a whole. You'll have yeah. one or two players who will carry us through, and the rest is just passengers. And that's the problem. We've had too many passengers, and we've become predictable since the international break. Madrid <laughs> beat us in transition. Yep. Brentford, when they beat us 4-1, every goal was on the transition. Ooh. You lot battered us, what? On the transition. Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys came out. I think that's what benefited us and you guys came out for the win. And we exposed you in that sense because you, we kind of caught you on the counter for most of our goals, which which was, was good for Marte. You've got to give, give him the credit there. Um, yeah. I just want to kind of wrap up by asking you as well, just your thoughts on on that fourth spot. For do you see after what you saw today, do you see Arsenal or do you still think you know Tottenham are still in, in, in the in the leading race for that or United or West Ham? This is the thing. It's any of them. Because <laughs> the way I say it, and this is because we've been in the top four race the last day, the last two seasons. Yeah. The top four race is about consistency, and the problem is nobody has consistency, otherwise you wouldn't be in a top four race. Right. Like Manchester United two, three weeks ago, they were dead buried out of the top four race. Mm. Suddenly you guys lose a few games, Tottenham lose a few games, they're back in. It's the same thing for you guys now. You guys lost a few games, you got a result against Chelsea, you're now back in. The whole scene can change within a week or two. And that's the problem, it's unpredictable. Yeah. I don't know, you don't know, nobody's going it's to know. The but football, you guys are in a good position and you guys got a good result today. But the problem is consistency and again, no one's consistent, otherwise you wouldn't be in this position. So God knows, honestly. I Take care love. anyway. So as you know guys, this is it, bro. We're on our way to Nigeria. Yes. Lagos, here we come. AFTV is coming. Yes, I am very, very happy. I'm excited. 
very happy to be taking some people back home, you know. <laughs> some people that took three flights to, to their home in Ibadan. <laughs> I'm about to tell them how many flights they're about to take. So I'm very, very happy. Very happy. So Ty, come on, man. You must be excited. Your first time in Nigeria. Mm. Ty, do you even have a passport? <laughs> well, Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.